like it. <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. I'm Anna Gibbs, and I am the general manager of three Keller Williams uh, market centers and a business coach and a life coach and a passionate person for business and an affinity for entrepreneurs. So I decided a couple weeks ago that I would do this series called Surviving and Thriving. And my vision was to connect with small business owners from our area or maybe beyond and just really have a conversation with them around uh, the truth of owning a business, around the ups and ups and downs, and especially doing that right now in, you know, this, uh, I don't know what to call anymore, Sarah. I hate saying the new normal, but just this different environment that we're in, right? Since COVID-19 yeah. hit. So this week, I'm so excited uh, because I have Sarah O'Flattery with me, the beautiful Sarah. Uh, and full disclosure, uh, she uh, is someone I've, I've known for a long time. Uh, her mom and I are very, very good friends. So I've, I've had the privilege of watching her grow into this dynamic businesswoman over these last few years. And I'm really excited to dig in and hear her story. And I'm really happy to share it with all of you. So Sarah, this is like my uh, dream of having a talk show. So welcome to the show. I love this. <laughs> Whoa, now, can we, do we have the name for the talk show? I mean, I know it's the... Surviving and Thriving. Surviving. Okay, that's it. <laughs> and it gives. That's, I love it. <laughs> talk shows. We'll talk about that another time. But uh, no, really, I love the ability to connect. And now, you know, technology makes it easy to do that uh, with Zoom and we're live on Facebook. So it's, it's great. Um, so Sarah, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. I know you, but not everyone else does. So, hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Flaherty. Um, I am, well, let's start with uh, the fact that I'm a new mommy. Um, of my son, Graham. I'm also the owner of Angels on Earth Salon here in Newburgh, uh, New York. So um, I just got married about a year ago. And, um, you know, I, I love to um, really like try to reach out and inspire women. That's like my whole, I feel like, you know, goal in life, self-love, you know, to really help women you know, feel better about themselves. I feel like, you know, that's a big, huge thing, you know, and especially as a mom and just all that. It's a just new mom, a, right? A new mom. Yeah. Like us women, we forget about ourselves and I don't like that. No. So why I is love, that important to you? Why is it so important to support women, especially? Um, because I believe that women are constantly putting each other, bringing each other down. And, and I hate that. Um, you know, in high school and stuff, you always saw that. And I was like the girl in high school that like, I hated kids being picked on kids. And I actually got into like a couple fights and like got kicked out of school because I was like sticking up for kids. And I hate all that, you know, it's just so, so mean. And I just feel like people, you know, have a lot of, you know, hard time feeling good about themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think when you find um, that support group, tribe, whatever you want to call it, um, it can be so empowering. It is. And especially when you have the support of another woman behind you too. So who are some powerful women in your life that you find support and, and uh, encouragement from? Well, or maybe not in your life. Maybe it's Oprah Winfrey. I don't know. Yeah. So my mom, she, uh, she's my number one for sure. You know, I watched her struggle um, like her whole life, you know, um, and you know, she's a mom of four kids. I'm the oldest and I've watched like a lot of things that don't make me so happy. And, you know, and she just, she inspires me every day to keep pushing. So Aww, that's awesome. So tell us about your business. You have a couple businesses right now, right? So tell us yeah. what you're doing. So I am the owner of you know, Angels on Our Salon. I, um, I've been in three years, I've been in business for three years. Um, so I have a team of girls there that like are such rock stars. I love it. Um, and how many are on your staff or on your team? So we have five girls right now. Um, so yeah, they're all amazing. We all have our own little things that make us so good and we all come together and I love that. You know, we all kind of have our weaknesses and our strong points and we come together 
and we really work well together with me being in business for three years that, you know, you go through girls that come and go and, you know, move on and grow. And so this is like my solid team right here. And it feels good to have that. And I also, um, I have a makeup company that I started with and I'm growing a team there. I have like 36 girls under me right now. Wow. So, Is yeah. that a network marketing company? Yep. Yep. It's like a, yep. A level, definitely. So I sell, um, I sell makeup and they have a little bit of a skincare line in it, but yeah, I'm growing a team now and it's just like growing rapidly, which has been so nice during this time. Cause I've been home. Yeah. And, you know, it's been scary for, for me and my husband cause we both own our own businesses. Yeah, so let's talk about that for a minute. You know, that's true. Both you and your husband are um, small business owners, entrepreneurs. And I think it was around March 21st, the order came in from the governor that we were non-essential and businesses were asked to close to prevent the spread of COVID and, you know, flatten the curve, you know, as we know. And uh, so how did that impact you guys being uh, new homeowners, new parents, scary so scary we didn't we didn't even know how to talk about it to each other you know mm. it was just like one of those things and disbelief like is this really happening um you know but we him and i both really try to create like a, a positive mindset always especially in our home and you know we just kind of we just like picked up other right things to do like me with the makeup thing um you know some people hate that the marketing like the MLM, but I, I, and I was always one that was like never for it, but I loved it. It was just something that helped me feel good, feel better, um, you know, get on social media. And then my husband, he just became like a general <laughs> contractor. <laughs> I, I don't even know who this man is. He just started doing that. For anyone who's watching who follows Sarah on social media or, or Brendan, uh, yeah, he's become like Mr. I don't know, handyman, GC. He's remodeled your your home in some really creative, beautiful ways. Totally. And like, we just bought our home. So it was new. So <laughs> there wasn't much to be done. But like, he just gets real creative. And we just so my point to that is, is we just really try to just, just try to focus on the positive and not the negative, you know, because we literally, I mean, not only did we like, just, money just stopped completely for us, you know, so scary. Yeah. So, so let's talk a little bit about that. And then we're going to come back to some things that are more about you, but you know, as a, as a salon owner, uh, any of, well, men too, but mostly the women watching this right now, we know all too well that our salons and, and, you know, spas, nail salons are all shut down. Yeah. And, uh, you know, listen, as much as I would love to go get a pedicure and a facial and, you know, my hair done. Um, we can live without that, you know, as, as sometimes we've heard some of our politicians say, and this is not to get political, uh, but what the other side of that statement is, it's not just about my nails or my hair, it's about the, the livelihood of those practitioners. And it's the fact that you're out of work and right. you and, and the, the team are out of work. So, you know, how have you been able to navigate that? Being out of work? The money part. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you don't mind talking about it, I mean, it can't sure. be easy. I, um, you really have to like, think about your life, right? You really have to think about like, not just what's in front of you. I feel like this whole situation has really taught me how to think about the future a little bit more. Um, think about, um, different sources of income, kind of, like, my mind has been going crazy, you know, mm -hmm. and it's kept me able to just constantly think of ways to just keep moving and keep living and keep thriving and, and just, just don't stop. Like, there's just so much out there for us to learn from, to educate ourselves, to thrive, you know, and, um, I think that I had this mindset obviously before this happened, but it changed even more now and, you know, saving money, stuff like that. These are really important things that I feel like a lot of people don't think about and don't do. So, yeah. so I think it's very important. Um, have you learned to live with less? Learn to live with less hundred percent. So yeah, 
I mean, I'm one to do it all and get it all and, you know, and, sh you know, I work hard. So I like, I like nice things. So yeah, I've definitely learned to live with less and be happy with what's in front of you, you know? Since COVID-19, what do you appreciate more? My family. Yeah. Yeah, my family. You know, my son, I couldn't wait to get back to work. And not that I couldn't wait to get back to work because I couldn't stand my son or anything like that. I'm just you love to work. I, I'm just a worker and that's all I knew how to do. And for the eight weeks that I was home, I loved being home, but I was somewhat miserable a little bit because that's all I know. I, you know, mm -hmm. I felt like I didn't have purpose. So it really helped me because I was just getting back to work my maternity leave just was ending and this started again. So right. it forced me to like really just enjoy being home with my family, which is something that me and my husband have no idea how to do, which we learned, you know, and enjoy yeah. each other. Like we, we don't know how to like be around each other. <laughs> well, I think a lot of us have learned that. Right. Yeah. And uh, that's another topic for another show. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, what's probably another topic for another show, but worth mentioning is, uh, I've always worked too. I've always been a career, career oriented person, but, and my career is very important to me. I find, you know, I'm living through my purpose now and I'm also a mom and I've always loved being a mom and believe it or not, I'm a new grandma and um, I, I've always worked and I never apologized for that either. So, you know, so another topic for another time would be you know, that you can still own a business and have a career and be a good mother. And that, you know, it's, it's okay to want both. You just have to figure out, you know, how that works in your own life because it works differently for everybody, but it's okay to say my baby comes first and I love my job. I love my business and I want a good work. Yeah. And it's definitely. okay for others who are home with their kids too. Well, you can, you can be a stay at home mom. Cause that's a full-time job. I personally could not do that. <laughs> right. I couldn't do it. But it's not that I couldn't do it because I'm I feel like I'm as if I'm better because I want to go work. No, that's like a serious job that I yeah. feel like I couldn't do. So I yeah. really appreciate all of it. You know, moms that go yeah. to work, moms that stay home, um, all of it. Yeah. So you mentioned before about mindset, and you know that's so important to me as a as a coach. I talk about mindset all the time. I think that honestly it's it's everything. It's what shapes our reality. So um, how important is it to you and, and what is significant to you about mindset? Um, it's hard, you know, because I really, I don't, not that I can say that I don't struggle mindset, but I feel like I am, it's very easy for me to put myself in a positive mindset, mm -hmm. which sometimes is not easy for people to do that. You know, sure. um, people struggle with depression and, and, and many, many, many things, you know? So, um, I think the, the, one of the big things that stand out to me is to surround yourself with people that have like-minded, like, like-minded people like you. I think that's a really big one. Mm -hmm. Um, I've learned that in the past that, you know, when I, I, you know, I've surrounded myself around friends that aren't doing the same thing. And, you know, I, I just, that one stands out to me a lot is you just have yeah. to surround yourself around people that are just going to push you to do more, take you out of your comfort zone and, and, and push you, you know? So, you know, I mentioned, um, I've known you for a long time and we have people I'm sure who are watching, who, um, are friends and family members, but also follow you on social media. Yep. And, um, one of the things that I've been watching for a while now, a couple of years is this brand, I guess I would say that you've created for yourself and this presence that you have online. And I think a lot of people looking at you would say, wow, that is one confident person. Um, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about what you, you show on social media, why you do what you do? I mean, you, you also appear to be very transparent yeah. on social media too. So are we seeing the real Sarah when you post stuff? Uh, for sure. For sure. I try to be real, raw, authentic in every way. Um, you know, I, I try to show every side of me, whether it's the wake up in the morning side where I'm not like all done up and glamorous and, you know, um, I try to show the good stuff, the bad, I try to show it all. So yeah, I, I feel like I'm being very 
open and real to my audience and followers or friends and family and everybody else. Um, yeah, me too. Why, does, why is that important? Why create the platform and the following and what because, I've called a brand for lack of a better word? Because people, this social media and this way of just seeing people in the world, people compare too much. And it's very important to show people that you're not perfect because I feel like that creates a lot of insecurities out there. And, yeah. you know, when you see somebody, I always tell like people like follow people on your Instagram or your Facebook, people that really try not to follow the people that you, you're, you love what they're doing, but they inside make you a little jealous or, you know, because it's usually those are the people that are not really so real. Yeah. And that's important. You know? Yeah. I think there's enough uh, things out there to make us feel inadequate. Yeah, we choose, right? So we have to put our attention on the things that lift us up. So are you, would you say, are you being intentional about being someone who's, who's lifting other people up? Is that one of the things that you'd like to say is, yeah, is true sure. about you? I, I, that's, I feel like, so that's my biggest thing is, and some people I've heard, I've heard this two ways. I inspire some people and some people, it, people don't like it. They think I'm trying to, you know, be, you know, show attention. Same. I'm sure I have the same reaction yeah. with people sure and you know and you can think what you want and that's the mindset i believe that they're in so we're just in right. different mindsets that's all and yeah. you can think it's what more you about want. them than you right right it's not about it's about me if i could help one person and then there's five other people over there just saying that i'm doing things that i do for attention and that's fine you know i just try to create a mindset and just we're just in different mindsets. That's all, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, well, let me ask you a question. Is attention, is, is attention a bad thing? It, no, not at all. I think attention's bad if it's self-serving. For right? sure. But For if, sure. if, if we're getting attention, just like I hope that doing this interview with you is getting attention. Of course. It, it's attention because we want to bring the focus to the conversation. Right. Right. And I, and, and I think that social media gives us a platform to have a dialogue, to have a conversation with people and to get people to think, you know, so I, I just, I don't know if attention is so bad if it has the right purpose behind it. Well, right. And it has a different purpose for every, every person, you know, and sure. that's, that's it. What would you say um, is, is, what is your passion? I know you talked about you love to work, you love to help pe make people feel good, you like to support women. Um, you know, obviously you are really focused your career in a line of, of beauty or self-care. Um, are those your passions or is it deeper than that? Um, those are pretty much my passions, you know. I, um, yeah, those, I mean, they all, you nailed it all pretty much for all of them. You know, there's a, there's a little, deeper um stuff in there but I think for the most part that's it you know I I hate I just hate to see the negative stuff in this world going on mm. and I I feel like there's only one of me and I wish I could try to help more people and and really reach out to more people and I think that's kind of what I'm trying to do as much as I can um yeah. without you know forgetting about <laughs> my family because I feel like sometimes I'm on social media so much but you know it's just self-love and self-care is just so important to me and self-worth has, you know? has it always been or is that something you've learned along it's the way definitely something I've learned along the way for sure yeah yeah, yeah. um so there's somebody been, even when I was younger I struggled a lot of different things you know um which I don't know if is if we should touch on that in this topic, but we're talking about that, that's today. up to you. I'm, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. You don't take me. That's up to you. But if there was somebody watching, um, who maybe wasn't feeling, um, as confident about themselves or, or struggling with that whole thing around self love, um, what, what words of advice or inspiration would you share with them right now? that just don't just don't compare yourself to anybody your story your um pace is your pace so i think the one thing that i learned when i stopped comparing myself and stopped like 
looking at other people and saying, what, oh, look what she has or look what he has or look what they're at or he's married or they have kids. You know, I'm 34 and I feel like I'm starting a little later in life that I, I wish I would have started way earlier because um, I could only imagine where I've been, but it doesn't matter. It's your own pace. It's your life. You know, just every day is a new day. Every day is a new day. And um, what, okay, so I love that because I think that there are so many people who do compare, there's a, there's a saying that says, don't compare your insides to somebody else's outsides, right? So what we see may not be the whole story and then we create the story about ourselves internally um, that, you know, just, it doesn't always serve us, right? So we have to find ways to align our thoughts and our our feelings with things that lift us up and are much more positive. So I'm going to tie this back into um, the uh, the salon. So Angels on Earth is in Newburgh, and uh, it's a, it's a really it's a great space. Um, I know a little bit about what it looks like in there. Talk to me about the aesthetics. What was your thought when you created the space? What were what was your intention? Uh, what did you want someone to feel when they walked in the door? So one thing that always stands out to me and and this doesn't this isn't directed to anybody, um, but like I know that when I walk into places and a lot of the times, I never felt wel welcomed. I always felt stared at or never like a big warm welcome. And I'm such like a warm, loving, I give hugs to everybody and I never like felt that. Some places I have, I can't say never, so that I'm using the wrong word, but a lot of the times I came into places and I never felt that. And one thing that I wanted people to feel when they walked in that place, in my place, in that place, in that place, <laughs> is that the love and everybody needs to say hello to everybody. And that's one thing I've just driven, you know, just told my girls to make everybody feel good. And that's one thing I want when, and when anybody walks into my doors is that feeling. Um, and nothing less. Nice. You know? What has been the most gratifying or, or yeah, most gratifying part of being a business owner so far? Gratifying. Failure, right? Really? That's, that's pretty, um, that's deep. I love it. Yeah. Tell us more about that. So you're going to fail. You're going to always fail some way, somehow. And it's about how you get back up again. And the, I, I've failed in a lot of things um but i i never gave up i just keep going i keep learning i keep trying to educate myself spends tons of money on education and i just never i never give up i don't just get up every day and just go to work and just do hair you know there's way more to it than that for me at least um, yeah you know so failure failure you know and I always end my biggest like quote and I wanted to end this but it's a good time to I guess put it in there failure is just not an option for me just not mm -hmm. so no I but say, it is part it is part of the journey right I mean sometimes it's failing forward right it doesn't mean that failure is the end of the game it's just like you said it's how you how you bounce back from that yep so that's been gratifying for you. It has been because I've learned so much from it. In order for me to learn, I felt like I had to fail. And not that I did it purposely, but yeah. You know, no, that that's awesome. I have to tell you that this is another one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video series because I truly believe it doesn't matter if you own a salon, if you own a dog grooming. Uh, if you're a doctor, if you know you're a real estate agent, a banker, it doesn't matter what the profession, vocation, or business is. I do believe, though, that we all have such valuable lessons to learn through being in business and to share with other people. And that's what I, you know, why I wanted to do this because I wanted to give everyone not only their platform, but then use that to teach or inspire someone else or encourage someone else because. I think so many people are afraid to talk about failure, yet, yeah. it, you know, what I know to be true is that you can't succeed at a high level without having a few, a few, you know, missteps or even failures. Truly. And what I, do you learn from if you don't have the failure? Right. And I see a lot of small businesses right now struggling. And if I could just yeah. say one thing is just failure is not an option and just try to have that mindset and just try to push through. It's a really hard time and I get it, but just there's, there's, you know, just 
try to just create like a tunnel vision that this isn't yeah. going to be the end, you know? No, because I also believe that through the biggest challenges come the greatest opportunities, right? And through the, you know, the biggest, um, through the darkest nights sometimes come the best, you know, sunrises. So you just have to understand that whatever you're going through, there's something bigger and better on the other side if you choose to look for opportunity. Right. And you know. we can give up, right? It's easier to give up. Well, it is. Yeah, it is, it is easier to give up, you know. So, so that's a great segue to my next question. What's the hardest thing about being a business owner for you or for, you know, in general? What's been the hardest thing? Whew. Hmm. Hardest thing. Nothing comes, nothing is so like, I know how to do hair and cut hair and, but I have all my life struggled um, in high school. Like I had really hard time um, taking tests and, and really like grasping how to be like the actual a bit on the business end of it was really hard for me. Nothing came easy. I used to have to like, get taken out of class and get my tests read to me. And, you know, it was never easy for me in, in growing up education and stuff. And, um, you know, I have, I have a little bit of a learning disability. I'm not going to lie. Well, I mean, a lot of people do. I mean, I, you know, and again, nothing to be ashamed of. It's just no. everyone, you know, and that's another topic for another, uh, show is it really a learning disability or is it just a learning adaption? Like you just have a different way of understanding and learning. So, but you know, what people sometimes forget is the child who has that, one of my children has a learning disability uh, and you grew up to be an adult that you still have some of those things carrying forward. So um, it's, there's a lot to learn about being a business owner, right? There is, you know, and it was scary for me knowing that it was hard for me to, you know, like, just like adding up my numbers at the end of the day. <laughs> You're not alone. You're girl, you are not alone. No, but I didn't let that I didn't let that scare me. Like I didn't let that stop me or hold me back. Good. Yeah, listen, uh, you know, okay, so as a business coach, that's probably something I talk to people a lot about that you are a master of your craft, that you are passionate about whatever it is that you do. Uh, that brought you into the business, but that doesn't necessarily mean you know how to start or run a business. That means that now you have to learn, you know, how to be an accountant, how to be a marketer, how to be, you know, a boss, right? You have to uh, learn how to leadership. A manager, how to manage other people, how to yeah. like yeah. inventory, you know, all of it. It's like, yeah. you know, so would you change a thing? Yeah, it's, it's, it was a lot. So that was my hardest thing. It's really creating like this business behind everything, you know? So that yeah. was hard, but I didn't give up. You know, I stayed long hours in the beginning too. When I opened my doors on February 1st, 2017, I didn't have one client because you know, Anna, really? I did just weddings. I just did weddings with, you know, so I didn't have like clients and- You didn't have a following as they I didn't say, have right? A following, right? I didn't have clients that came back every six weeks for a root touch up. I had wedding, I did brides and I never saw them again, you know? Right. So I really took a risk. I took a, a big risk and, you know, like I didn't, I sat there every day and whether people came or not, my business hours were my business hours. So I put a lot of work into everything. I didn't just sit there- at the front desk either when I'm scrolling on like social media, you know, like I really figured out like how to get people in here, like reaching out to people, giving free haircuts, blowouts, putting myself out there, you know, is I, that kind of how I don't, sorry. Is that kind of how the whole uh, platform really developed for you? Like uh, on social media was yeah. realizing like, that's how I could reach out to people and let them know about my salon and bring them in. And definitely it's free. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's free. Think, right. Like, frequent mailers stuff all that stuff costs money and was a waste sure. of my time social media is your platform use it yeah you know i remember like um i don't know it was like when i was on my maternity maternity leave and it was like a friend of mine or somebody said like wow you're really bored at home you've been on social media a lot and i'm like no that's not it i'm just making sure no one forgets who i am yeah yeah, I mean, you really, it's part of your job, right? It's part yeah, of you like if I go, your business. Yeah, if I go and disappear for eight weeks because I'm being a mom and people are going to move on. <laughs> yeah, 
you know? So, but, but the funny thing is, who's to say that you're not sitting there nursing your baby while I you're, was. you know, figuring out the next post? So, I was. I was, yeah. if you remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. So, um, so, you know, being a business owner now in, in today's world, there's another learning curve coming at you, especially being a salon owner. And I'm curious. Um, and I, I know, not only do I know you, I have two other very, very good friends of mine who are uh, salon owners and, and uh, practitioners also. Um, so I, I've had some conversations with them, and I'm sure we all realize that when we go back in and things are open again, it's going to be a very different experience in your salon, in any salon. Yeah. And, and I'm just going to ask some questions around, and, you know, like, we're just going to be honest, like you work so hard to create this atmosphere when people walk in and now it's going to be a little different, right? Because what are some of the things, if, if you can share with us, what are some things that, you know, we need to be prepared for that you're preparing for? I mean, I know you were just uh, recently quoted in the Times Herald record. Yeah. Uh, they had an article about salon owners getting ready to get back into business. And is it true that you can't have more than one stylist in at a time? No, it's not true that I can't, but in order to uh -huh. practice the six feet distancing, I mean, our chairs are right on top of each other, really. Right. So it's more like we're just trying to slowly kind of, I mean, at this point, I was only working three days a week anyways, so we're just going to try to just really do what we can to just make sure this doesn't happen to us again, because that's most important to us, right? Um, yeah, the health, the, health, that, the health precautions, right? Right, the health precautions. I think we're more, you know, we have to worry a little bit about, and you guys, like the outsiders coming in, are not so worried because they need their hair done. Yeah, <laughs> so, but, you know, the, the, the safety goes both ways, right? I mean, well, it's, it's, so that's it. The safety yeah. goes both ways. So we have to really try to enforce what we have to do. So if I have to have two only two stylists on out of the five, um, just to keep, you know, I mean, my salon's big, but it's not that big. It's almost right, right. 1,800 square feet, which isn't that. So we just have to really, which is really, really going to be hard for us because not only do we have three months from March, right, of people that were all in our schedules. I mean, my schedule gets booked out three months in advance. So where am I going to, I have to put all those people in my schedule now, now, and then now all the people that need their hair done. Yeah, right. It's going to be tough. And we double, book, we triple book ourselves sure. normally, so. Yeah, sure, we've all been there, right? You put the color on my hair, I sit and wait while you get the next person in the chair, but that may look different now for a while. Exactly. And as a business owner, you know, I'm sure that that's going to have an impact on, you know, productivity, which is an impact on profitability. So, you know, it's, again, a whole other learning curve and, you know, how it's going to affect the overall numbers and, um, I'm sure you've had to invest money in additional equipment now and, and sterilization. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's all, it's all crazy, but yeah, it's going to work and it, it, we're going to be okay. Let's, I just keep telling myself that we're all going to be okay. If we have to work seven days a week, we're all willing to do that at this point anyways, because we all want to just work our butts off. <laughs> and, uh, that's that. So um do you have any kind of like inside information that you can share with us like when can we get our hair done <laughs> sorry i just had to ask <laughs> do you know no i'm just kidding <laughs> oh no como is just like he's just like not telling us so i guess i know we just have to wait we're phase two in june 9th or something like that yeah, yeah. soon yeah. soon soon yeah. soon soon but so before we run, go, phase one has to go well. Right. I mean, that's right. People that's have to good. understand phase one just started. And yeah. so we have to give that an opportunity and, and make sure it's working. Because like you said, everyone's health is, is priority number one and flattening this curve and making sure that we don't go back into, you know, but you know what, here's the thing. Like I've had a lot of conversations with business people and business owners and it is not a negative outlook. It is not a doomsday kind of prophecy, but we're all talking about like, what has this taught us about meeting the challenges of maybe the next pandemic, I hate to say it, or natural disaster or whatever. I mean, you know, it, it is really an opportunity to think about 
How do we come out of this better than we were when we went in it? And how do we stay prepared for the next challenge? Have you had any of those thoughts yourself? It's tough. I mean, it's definitely tough. I live a very fast paced life, but I guess, I guess we all just have to slow down. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> wash your hands, people. Wash your hands. <laughs> it's hard. Oh we gosh. live in New York, man. Yeah, I know. It's, it, 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 is, it is a little surreal that we found ourselves here, but so yeah. listen, Sarah, before we run out of time, there's definitely a question. You know, I wrote a couple questions down that I knew I wanted to ask you. And one of the questions I wanted to put in front of you uh, is up till now, what would you say has been your biggest accomplishment? Because you've done some other things we didn't talk about. Like, can I can I mention, you know, competing with, you know, professional bodybuilding, sure. and, right? So, yeah, yeah, that's a huge accomplishment. Um, you know, it was definitely not only because I competed and, you know, got my body in the best shape. It was more of the, um, it was how that, okay. So competing definitely changed my outlook. It was like that next like curve for me to really, cause I just, realize that I can do anything that I put my mind to. So it was definitely one of the biggest accomplishments for me back then, you know, to start creating this life for me in a different mindset that like, look at what you just did. You know, you, yeah. you dropped all your friends, like you, you, you like everything. I, my whole life changed and you know me. Well, I'm it's intense, you know, to prepare for that and to work out and practice and, you know, yeah. Probably one of the hardest things that I had to do, you know, that I didn't have to do, that I did. Right, like, that you chose to do. Yeah, like, that I chose to do. This the amount of, you're just so strict with everything. It was, it's just incredible how strong mentally that I became. Mm -hmm. So that was very, um, I was very proud of myself because I was very, you just have to be so strong. Like, it was like, the craziest yeah. thing. Mentally, um, physically, right? Discipline, I mean, I mean. Lens. my god nine you know i don't even think i could do that now i think back to that and i'm like god almighty how did i do that um but one of my biggest accomplishments is i never thought i was going to be a mommy and definitely you didn't you didn't think you'd be a mom no <laughs> interesting i don't think i knew that, that. wasn't for me <laughs> really not really so what has being a mom taught you that i'm supposed that? to be a mom that what i'm supposed to be a mom that you're a great mom, yeah. yeah. What um, what has opened up in you becoming a mother? Um, well, it's like it opens up a whole nother. Like it makes me um, it's just like it's calmed me down a lot, obviously. Um, but it's it's changed, it's changed my outlook on what's important and what's not. Yeah, you know, like so many things that I used to think were so important. <laughs> like what um like going out every weekend stuff like <laughs> that you know that's so big a deal anymore such a big deal to me <laughs> i had to do so, it so yeah. what's a typical uh saturday night for you just being with my family like your like, husband and your baby they used to always say that i had like fomo all the time and <laughs> and it's not even like going out it's just you know, constantly on the move and just never, just never being able to like know how to mm -hmm. just, just stop and relax and, and enjoy the moment. Like, you know? Yeah. So I, I, listen, I can relate to that um, too, that I have found a lot of, a lot of meaning in the quiet and the slowing down for sure. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know how to do that. And my son has taught me a lot, a lot of patience, which I never thought I had, you know? Um, how old is he now? Six months. Six months. Yeah. He's adorable too. Thank you. He's really a good boy. And you know, he may, it's fighting too. He taught me how to fight. Like I, like in the beginning was not easy. I mean, any mother knows it's just not easy. You lose, yeah. like, you lose a lot of like what you are for all the good, for your son, for your family, for your yeah. everybody. But like it, for me, that was really hard, you know? Yeah. Really hard. Did you gain, I have to give Jill a little plug. Did you gain a new appreciation for your own mama? <laughs> hundred, like, thousand percent. If you're watching Jill, that's for you. <laughs> really, you know, she always used to say, or she still says, you'll, you'll, well, she doesn't really say it much anymore because we all have kids now, but like, you'll understand when, you know, you have kids of your own. It's really the 
the the most true statement ever. Yeah. You really, you really don't get it until you become a mommy and you, you know, yeah. you realize the love is incredible, you know? Yeah. And a working mom, you know, and, you know, listen, a lot of props, due respects to all the working moms, all the moms out there and all the working moms. Uh, but yet when you own a business, it's a little, it's another whole dynamic too on top of it, you know? Yeah. It's a, it's so, a hard, hard thing to balance. Right. If there is such a thing, right? So now I'm definitely going to ask you my last question. This has been great. I could talk to you for hours. But um, the last question I have is, what would you say to someone who's watching and thinking of starting a business? What is, you know, some advice, real advice that you would like to give them? Stop waiting. Like, just do it, you know? Like, especially, it, it, just take the risk take the jump. It's the scariest thing in the world, but it's, it's the best thing. And like I said before, um, you know, just have that mindset where failure is just not an option. And, you know, you have to give it your all though. You, you can't half ass it. You have to give it your all. And can we quote you on that? You can't half ass it. Can't half ass it. No half assing. You yeah. gotta, you gotta show up every day, every day, no matter what it is, whether it's Sunday and you don't actually have to go into work. There's, you gotta do, you know, whether it's social media or inventory or getting your week prepared for the, for the week ahead, you know, just, you have to, you have to do it. If, if you're not ready to do it and you're thinking you're going to half ass it, well, maybe you're not ready. <laughs> Yeah. And can you ever really be ready? Well, you can't ever be ready, but you have to give, you have to promise yourself and give yourself your best self every day. Awesome. Sarah, tell everyone again, the name of your salon and where it's located. Cause that's another reason why I want you to do stuff like this is to, you know, definitely support you and uh, promote your business. So it's angels on earth salon in Newburgh, New York. And how can they find you if they're interested? Um, many, many, many ways. <laughs> so you're on Instagram, Facebook. Facebook, all of it, like Google, you name it. I'm on every, any platform. My you number can find Sarah over, there. Like my, <laughs> my number is all over the world. <laughs> Not too hard. Uh, I love it. Thank you so much for doing this. This was awesome. Thanks for you having so me. Many, you had so many great things to share. I'm sure a lot of people took away um, some, some really good nuggets from this. So I'm really yeah. great that we did this and, uh, I love you. I love you. Thank All you. right. Thanks so much. You have a great day. Hello, Anna. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Bye.